Welcome to another video on how to increase your screen time. Photoshop is now available on iPhone and soon to be on Android too. Is it a game changer or a solution to a problem that we never had? In this video, we dive deep into what it is, how to use the features and is this really for you? So without any further ado, let's get started. All you have to do is to go to your respective app stores, search for Photoshop and there it is, Adobe Photoshop. I don't know why they had to title Powerful AI Image Editor. Yes, there are AI features, but still it's Photoshop. Anyway, let's open it. Now you may be asking, is it free? Well, kind of. It is free to install. It has free features and premium features. Now keep in mind, if you already have the OG Photoshop desktop subscription, you don't have to pay extra for this. You have everything included. Now, it's a different story if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop. Either way, you can do a fair bit of things just with the free version. This is the free version. You can create a blank new document or import from your photos. I'm going to click right here and maybe I'm going to import this particular photo. Let's click there and it's going to create a brand new document. Now there are some quick actions. We're going to skip that and go to editor. The first thing I want to do here is expand the photo. For that, let's go to size and let's expand it from the top like so and from the bottom as well. And you can use generative expand for it. So let's click right here. You can type any prompt you want. I'm going to hit agree and click on generate. Keep in mind, I'm still using the free version and you do get a limited number of credits each month. Keep in mind, there's only a limited amount of times you can apply this. And there you go. The results are just incredible. Here's the first, second and third. All of them would work. Maybe let's go with the first one. If you're happy with it, hit apply. Now say you want to add some text behind the subject. Here you'll see all the layers. Let's click on this arrow. You'll see all the layers right here. Now I'm going to make a copy of the subject. So let's select this layer and make a duplicate of this layer by clicking on the three dots and click on duplicate right here. And we can tap and hold and actually place it at the very top. Now in this layer, we just want to mask out the subject. We just want to keep the subject visible. For that, with that layer activated, click on create mask. Now we want to select the subject. There are just so many ways to do it. You can also automatically do it. Photoshop detects everything. Just click on the subject right here. It adds that to the selection. There you go and hit apply, check. There you go. Now we have the subject separated. And if you turn off the other layers, you'll just see that. Have a look, just the subject. Let's go to layers again and turn everything back on. Now just above this layer and below the subject layer, we are going to create our text layer. So let's close the layers, click on the plus to add a new layer. And there are different types of layers that you can create. In this case, we are going to create a type layer. It's already behind the subject. So I'm just going to type dance. Once you're happy, tap outside and you're done. You can resize it just like regular text. You can position it. And by the way, you can zoom in just to make precise adjustments. So now it is easier for us to resize. Sometimes it can get a bit tough, but this is how you do it. Now you can of course change the font, do whatever you want. That is up to you. I'm going to make it slightly larger like so. This works. And to change the font, first of all, let's apply the transformation and then go to text options here. And here you can change the font to whatever you wish. You do have free fonts here, but if you have an Adobe subscription, you get thousands of fonts that you can use, but you have enough free as well. So I'm going to go with Avenir next condensed. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. Let's go with this one. Click there. And there we have our text looking pretty fantastic. You can also change the color, the size from here as well. Let's click on color and you can use the color wheel or set it to white. White looks nice on this one. Hit apply. Now all of this is still using just the free features. However, usually I like to change the blend mode of the text to overlay for some added effects, but we won't be able to do that. Hit apply right now with the text selected. We can click on blend and opacity and the normal blend mode is of course the default, but you cannot select the other blend modes except for multiply and screen for the free version. All of the other blend modes are just only for the premium version. So if I click on overlay, it will ask me to subscribe and all of the premium features, if you notice, has that crown right next to it. But anyway, there are lots of free elements to add as well. Let's apply this and then let's create a brand new layer. So I'm going to click outside click on the plus and here you can add an image layer. There are tons of free content on Adobe stock and you can even generate something if you wish. Let's add something from Adobe stock. There are so many elements to browse from different skies, different fabric. Let's go with this one. Hit OK. Wow, that really, really looks good. So I'm going to make it larger, larger from here as well. Sometimes the controls can be awkward. This is looking incredible. Now again, I wish I could change the blend mood to something else, but I can't on the free version, but this is already looking incredible. Let's click on the tick to apply it. And there we have it. 
let's talk about retouching a little bit. Let's see how much we can do. So from our photos, I'm going to open this photo. Now there's some acne that we want to remove. So you can zoom in and use a lot of different tools. Keep in mind, this is the free version. So if we go to the retouch section, see the remove tool, the clone stamp tool, all of that is premium. If I click on that, it will ask me to subscribe. But for a limited time, Photoshop apps says that the spot healing brush tool is free. I don't know how long that is going to be. So you have to paint over the blemish and it kind of removes that. It may not be as good as the remove tool, the brand new one, but it is the way it is. And it is quite fast and it does a pretty good job, I have to say. So maybe this area. But I don't know how convenient this is on a tiny screen like this. And you can take your time to fix little blemishes, but hey, it is just much easier to do it on a big screen, on the real Photoshop. And if you're working with AI plugins like Retouch for me, you can just do it in one click. I highly recommend that you try it. Here's the link or check the link in the description to try it absolutely for free. So in one click, it detects all of the blemishes and removes them. Also, it does high-end dodging and burning. Now let's get to the premium version to explore more of the premium features. Now, I didn't have to pay anything extra for this. I already have Photoshop on my desktop. Stop. So everything is unlocked by default. Just sign in with your Adobe ID. Here, if we go to retouch, we have the remove tool available. Let's say you want to remove this guy like so. Just a loop around the guy. Let it go. And now she's single again. I'm so sorry, sister. In many cases, it does a much better job than spot healing brush. So here, the roads are a bit off. So I'm going to paint there again. Maybe make a circle. And there you go, it even fixes that. Now, if there are complicated areas, this is probably not going to work. If we try to remove her like this, by the way, the brush is too small. See the settings icon right next to the two? Click on it. And here you can change the size of the brush. And now if we were to loop around this subject, definitely not recommending this for complex stuff. In this case, it just didn't work. So let's go back. There's a solution for that too. And we're going to go back here. And we are going to make a selection by going to select area and then we can use the lasso tool. Click on it and just make a lasso selection. You want to make sure we are staying a little outside. Once you have that selection in place, click on the tick. There we have the marching ants just as we have in regular Photoshop. And then we can use generate a fill. Click on that, hit agree and generate. That's all. There you go, my friend. It did a much better job. And even just like Photoshop desktop, even in the phone, you have three options. First option, second option, third option. Now you do get adjustment layers even in the free version. Now I don't know which features are going to remain free by the time you watch it, but this is how it is. Let's say you want to change the color of his, whatever he's wearing, hoodie. So let's click on the plus and create an adjustment layer. Why? Because we can change this stuff later. Create hue saturation and we want to target the blues, right? So let's click on the blues and you can change the hue of that. That is fantastic. You can change the saturation of that and the lightness of that. So maybe I want a color like this. Now there's one problem with this. With Photoshop on the desktop, you can decide exactly what range of colors you are targeting. Here it is all fixed. So if we take the hue, let's say to the right hand side, the colors look a bit weird. If we decrease the saturation all the way to the left, not everything is gone. So the color targeting range is not something you can adjust. It is just fixed. So that is one limitation. Now the good news is it has my favorite adjustment. So click on the tick to apply it. Click on the plus, add another adjustment layer. And this time let's go with our favorite curves. By the way, while we are here, these are the adjustments we have. Click on curves and you get it right on the screen. That is pretty fantastic. So maybe we can do something like so. Maybe if you want to create a faded look, you can do that as well. You have different channels, red, green, and blue. You don't get the targeting hand that you get in Photoshop desktop's curves, but I'm expecting too much. This is already pretty good. Hit apply. And the great thing about adjustment layers is that you can change this stuff later. If you open up the layers, here's the curves that we added. Here's the hue saturation that we added. And you can expand that and you can adjust that. Let's say you want to adjust the curves, click on it, click on curves, and then you can adjust it at any point in time. Now that we have discussed the software in depth, let's talk about the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, definitely this is absolutely portable and it can open your PSD files that you even created on your desktop. So if I scroll down, here's a thumbnail that I created 
on the desktop. Pretty complicated. Let's open that. And the crazy part is, it shows all the layers of the document as you can see. For example, if we select the subject layer, we can transform it, move it around. So make it larger, smaller. Another positive point is, for someone who is just getting into the world of Photoshop, this interface is easier to digest than this one. There are like more than 500 functions in the real actual version of Photoshop. This is much less intimidating and a good starting point. And if you're someone who's familiar with Photoshop, you already use Photoshop on desktop and you want to make changes on the go or just have something for ideation, this is great too. And the other positive point is that it works seamlessly as cloud documents. So let's say you created something on your phone like the dance design, you can easily continue that by directly opening it on Photoshop desktop. You don't even have to download it as PSD, upload it, none of that. It's very straightforward. Now it automatically saves it as a cloud document, but if you still want a PSD, you can click on the export button here. You can click on export. By the way, there's PNG option to export. And here you have PNG, JPEG, PSD. You can choose whatever you want. Now coming to cons, there are a few things that bother me. I'm so sorry, Adobe, but we need to make this better together. First of all, there are tons of super essential features missing. For example, if I were to create a mask by clicking on apply as mask, there's no way I can paint and adjust that. Yes, there are selections I can make, but if I go to the layer mask, click on edit mask, there's no way I can precisely paint these areas back in. Yes, you can go to quick select brush and maybe select these areas, but if I wanted to paint certain areas like so, there is literally no way to do that. It also doesn't have gradients in any form, which I think is very limiting. Also, no Gaussian blur. Many filters are missing. Actually, there's nothing there. The second thing is, it's not at all a replacement for the desktop version of Photoshop. And it's not meant to be. I would say it has five or 10%, let's say 5% of the features, the main features Photoshop has. The third biggest problem, and this is not Adobe's fault, is editing on a small screen. You see, working on precise adjustments on a small screen like that doesn't seem very user friendly. Maybe because I've been working with Photoshop on the desktop for 20 plus years. Also, the limitation for free users are quite restrictive. You only have 5 GB of storage available for free users. And this can easily fill up with 6 to 10 high quality PSDs, especially if you're working with larger resolutions. Also for free users, you only get 10 credits per month. So, only 10 times you can hit the generate button. Now I do understand an app like this requires research and development, but still, if you were to select the text here, go to the layer properties, and I wanted to change the blend mode to something else, here, blend and opacity, there are not a lot of options, just two. At least give overlay for the free version. That's all I ask. So what do you finally think? Here are my thoughts. It's a very good addition to your existing setup, and you don't have to pay extra for this if you already have Photoshop. So there is no problem in it. It also has a good start for users who are just getting into the world of Photoshop. Although it needs improvement, I love the step in the right direction. A phone app, especially for Gen Z, seems more approachable. But the tiny screen may be a big deal breaker. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.